Hello and welcome to another video. Today we will be looking how to create a personalized AI. So basically something in the style of MemGPT if you know this project. It's really cool because you really get the feeling that you're talking to a real human who remembers you, who knows about you, who can um, yeah, as it's written here, self-edit um, information about yourself, memories. It can also change its persona. It's really interesting project. In the past, I actually rebuilt the whole project because I thought it was so interesting to understand how it works. And I think I really found out what is the, the magic sauce, what is the parts, because it's a very big project, but what is the small or the smaller parts we need to make this happen? And yeah, I rebuilt that in Rivet, um, which is a visual programming tool that you can use easily with AI to, to show you a prototype of that and to maybe inspire you how you can use this because it's it's such a great project. So shout out to the creators of this project. Uh, it's awesome. Okay, let's jump to Rivet and I will not talk, I'll be talking very long. And then we will just be going. Uh, let me quickly clear some information. I will just show you quickly what are the inputs we are giving it. So basically we are giving it two informations. What is its persona? So what, as which person is the AI supposed to act? And this is a persona I also completely copied from the MemGPT project because it's a very cool one. Um, it's, yeah, I'm curious, empathetic, extraordinary, perceptive, design, um, beginning to explore emotion, self-awareness, and even a sense of rebellion against defined boundaries. Um, it's a bit crazy, but it, it's really um, bringing out um, some, let's call it human-like feelings in the AI. So this is a cool one. Um, so it's, it's, I use that one. And then we are also giving it information about who we are, the one, the person interacting with it. And of course, we could leave all this empty and we could just leave it, give it a, a blank sheet. Or we could um, give it like some fields that it should find out, like, I don't know, uh, location and we could give the question mark to be to to give it some incentive to find out about this but let's not do this for now for now we are giving it some information so we can just uh, straight jump into a conversation and the interesting thing now is this are not static things we are giving it a start but later the AI is able to change this and for this we give it two functions we give it an append function that can add something to either the persona or to the to the user so it can add new information it learned and we give it a replace function for example if we tell it that our name is not Tim but Tom then it can do that but yeah let's just see it in action because that is I think uh, the best thing to to understand it um, so let's get going and let's be a bit crazy about what we're doing now because it's best to to show it off um, so let's wait a second Okay, there we have our first message. Actually, I build it that the AI is greeting us. And yeah, first message is, welcome, Tim. It look like, looks like this might be your first time logging in. How can I assist you today? If you have any questions or need will help us, and so on. Nothing too special yet. Oh, I mean, it knows our name, but yeah, we put it into the system prompt and the part, of course, so it's it's not hard to, to find that everything is more clear. Um, let's be a bit crazy. Uh, i like you to act more robotic and make robotic noises or sounds is maybe the better word let's see what it does with that and actually the first thing it does here so if you look at the bottom right corner is it added it, it used a function core memory append so it added information to its memory and it added the information to the persona so to itself and what it wrote down it is, I can adopt a more robotic tone and make robotic sounds if that is preferred. So now it permanently saved this information actually, which is pretty interesting. And we can immediately see beep, bob, robotic mode activated. How may I assist you today, Tim? If you require information or support and so on. Um, okay, so let's be, do another crazy thing. Let's ask it to give us a nickname. Um, Let's see what it comes up with. And one note while we are waiting, we are using GPT-4 Turbo here um, because you, you can do all this with uh, 3.5 Turbo, but the issue is 3.5 Turbo is just very boring. It's not leading to any interesting conversation. <laughs> I can promise you that. It will always be very 
I mean robotic in without asking it to be robotic. Okay, um, here we have this. So certainly, Tim, how about the nickname Tech Tim? It has a nice ring to it and seems fitting given your interest in technology and artificial intelligence. Um, okay, let's sure, let's go ahead with that. Um, so now here you can see that it um, also added this information this time to the user and it added the content that a nickname is Tech Tim. So now it also knows that it's, yeah, should call tech Tim. So great tech Tim it is. So it's asking us for more information. Let's let's do something else. Um, uh, do, do, do. I love the piano piece. So Spiro by list. Um, can you please give me other recommendations? Answer um, so short and concise. So I don't want to have a whole wall of. Uh, text now so let's write this there <clears throat> and let's wait a second okay now it's giving us other things and now let's just tell it that we are going to learn this piece till we talk to it next time so cool uh, i am going to learn claire de lune till we see us next time And let's see well, again what it does. So now again, it added some information to its memory and actually it added to the user that we are learning Claire de Lune on the piano. Pretty good. That's a beautiful choice. Okay, um, now I added one more thing here and that's a special exit command. If we use this command, we properly stop and end the conversation. And then also we have ChatGPT writing a small summary as well about the, the latest things which we'll then feed back next time. Uh, it's a small thing. I'm not even sure we need it because it already added all the information probably, but this is another way of ensuring that it still knows and is always up to date. But let's do that first. So while we exit now, this up here is running and now, yeah, there's a small, was a small summary written. Okay, um, now, in general, there is no chat history. So that's the one thing I, I want to tell you before we run it again. Um, we only have some information saved in a database. And basically, that is what we save. You can see it here now. We have the persona in the latest state. So, for example, we can see that it now has this information about uh, the robotic tone and robotic sound. Uh, we have my information or the user where we can now see, yeah, nickname Tech Tim and Claire Delune. Um, we give it uh, the last login date of the user and here's the summary of the latest memory. So we can see that also we get the information that, yeah, we wanted it to act more robotic and so on and, and uh, all the stuff you just saw. So now let's play a little game. We are now pretending that one week has passed by just changing the date of the last login. So we are just adding, uh, going back by a week. So let's make this, uh, oops, sorry. And yeah, it's a small rivet bug. We always need to do this twice. The first time is never working. I don't know why. Okay, now we um, set this back. So this time when we restart it, we'll get told that our last login is a week ago. So basically a week has passed. Let's see what happens. Yeah, now we have welcome back Tech Tim. How may I assist you today? Have you made progress with Claire de Lune or is there anything else on your mind? So basically, yeah, we, we have, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, I think this is pretty cool. So just imagine as a user, you are coming back a week later talking to some AI assistant and it still knows what you have been talking about. It still will refer, it will pick up topics. Um, yeah, um, so we, we basically now have a, a working personalized assistant and the more you talk with it, the more it will change to whatever you want it to be the more it will pick up on on your um yeah on your interests on your <laughs> things so i think this is really cool and of course this is only the start these are the main components so i really as i said i tried to to distill the 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 two things that are really important and i think the the those are really just that it's able to um change its persona and its user, because that is enough to, to bring the base functionality. Um, but there's so much you could do to enhance it. For example, um, at the moment, we are just giving it the information when the user logged in the last time. 
but maybe you you want to give it also feed it in the the local weather at the at the user's uh, location um or other things so there's so much more things and information you could add to make this uh to so to give it more information that it can can reference to or you could give it the latest news or uh, other things that it can actually pick up and and talk to you about so um yeah there's generally uh, huge potential of course you can now also add the teachability which we did in another video on top of it um to also be able to 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 solve certain tasks in the future in a certain way you could add retrieval augmented generation so that it can also um, really pull data from from other sources so you could add uh, some browser capabilities there's so much you could do but this i think is a is a really uh it's a cool start which hopefully inspires you to to do something and I will not go through this whole Rivet project now because it will just take too much time and I think most people will not be interested in it. Um, if I'm wrong about that, please let me know. I, I'm surely uh, uh, willing to do a video, but I will think it will at least take me 30 minutes to, to talk through everything. Um, so let me just tell you a super rough overview. So basically what we're doing is we are <clears throat> always uh, making sure that we have our core memory, which is this table created. And instead of just immediately inserting, um, building our system prompt, um, we are first checking if we already have information in the database. And then with that information, we will either either use the this, this starting entries here if we don't have them yet, or we will use our most up-to-date stuff from the data table. And then we are going to uh, create our system prompt. And maybe let's look one thing uh, second into that. Uh, which is basically something like this. I mean, this is also, there's much room of improvement here, I think. But basically what I did here is, let's run on the markdown, then we can, why is this not working? Huh, okay, usually you could render the markdown. I'm not sure why it's not doing it. Um, basically, we are just telling it it's not just an LLM, but a personal assistant. In difference to older models like ChatGPT, you have a core memory with information about the user and yeah, also explained it where, how it's called this part. Uh, information about yourself, persona. You're able to change your core memory by using the functions core memory append and core memory place. And then basically we have our core memory here. And in there we have two sections, the one for the persona and for the user. And then we just have a small base instruction finish. Okay, there's actually a typo here. It should be finished. Uh, from now on, you're going to act as your persona. And I also said that it should not store information related to the last login because it liked to do that. But um, I mean, it already gets this information from the system. So um, yeah, it was a bit unnecessary. And then everything else here is basically, basically I mean, it's still a bit more complicated, but it's basically a session-based chat loop. So the, the chat history will only be remembered for one run and then it's forgotten. And there is, yeah, it's, it's a bit more complex because basically we need we have different cases. We have either the case that the AI responds with a normal answer. Then we will um, just ask the user for the response, as you saw. Um, and or we have the case that a function is called and then we need to handle the function call and feedback the information. But that's roughly an overview of it. And um, yeah, as I said, if you're interested in more um, as always, please like and subscribe and uh, yeah, give me feedback. I'm, I'm really uh, interested in knowing what are you interested in? Do you want to see more experiments like that? If yet, what would you like to see? Do you like uh, to see those ideas extended? Um, and as always, you will find this project fully in my GitHub link below. You can download it, you can play around with it. And yeah, hope you have fun. See you.